Hello everyone, thanks for pressing play. You are watching a brand new episode of Excalibur CCG TV where every week we come together to talk about the great comics hitting the shelf for that week. This week we are talking about uh, the week of November 5th and the comics that are hitting the shelf. We are looking forward to so many great comics and we're going to tell you about them all. I'm Chris, my co-host Randy, co-host Buzz. We are back at it again having a blast. And guys, as always, this is going to be a longer episode. So if you can't watch the video, you can click uh, in the description down below and download the MP3, listen to us on the go while you're down there. Please subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. All the links are down below. You can find them there. And if you remember the old uh, commercial with the, the trash that gets thrown on the road and the Indian that cries there, the single tear, that happens when we get a thumbs down to Chris. <laughs> That's it all happens. my fault. <laughs> single tear. <laughs> Somebody hates me. Why would you give us a thumbs down? Why? What? Did, how, there's nothing wrong. Uh, my thinking is they didn't like me ranting on uh, uh, Walking Dead. I'm going to blame myself for that. Oh, you're going to take the blame for that one? <laughs> no, I'm right. throwing myself on the grenade. Just, <laughs> we just know we're going to find you. <laughs> we're like a Kevin Smith and, and Jason we'll, Hughes. We'll, 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 <laughs> We'll find you and we'll wine you and dine you and win you back. Win you back. That's, That's what we're going to do. We we'll beat you down comics. in the back end. Because we love all of you guys. <laughs> Thanks to all of our subscribers. Our subscriber count is slow. We are, we are not far from the 500 subscriber yeah, mark. That's awesome. It is, it is fantastic. I'm so excited about that. And that is thanks to you all. We really appreciate it. We have a big announcement. Everybody, we, I've been getting messages on Facebook and people have been asking in the store. Randy, you want to tell them what it is? Randy uh, is pregnant. <laughs> I'm not showing yet, though. Not, That's the good not, thing. Not, it's not a Tuma. It's not a Tuma. I, I love it. all. <laughs> no, this November, the 20th through the 23rd, that is a Thursday through Sunday, yes. we finally have our Mega Cell set. Yes. So prepare your list. It's going to be anything from uh, everything in the store will be on sale from. 10 to 75% off. That 75% off is usually our back issues on Sunday. They have a sliding scale of 45, 55, 65, and 75%. Any percentage you feel like you can live with and still get the books that you're looking for, yeah. grab them. If you wait for Sunday, wait for that 75%, there's a good chance you may miss out on something there. Exactly. So everything in the store is going to be on sale here. This is, uh, I guess, our pre-Black Friday sale. We're, we're, you know, getting people to come in here early and do the shopping. So, uh, and that helps them avoid the traffic of the Black Friday. Yes. Stuff. So, do that. Prepare your list. Uh, write lists for loved ones so that they can come in and do some shopping for you. Something there. Exactly. And while you're here, uh, you can get gift certificates as well. It's yeah. the, tis the season, so don't forget that. that that's the, gra the greatest gift of all. If you're undecided, if, if someone, if you have someone that wants to get you something, they don't know what you get you, just tell them, hey, get me a gift certificate from Excalibur Comics Cards and Games, and uh, you can use that. You can use that during the sale if you happen to get it beforehand. So yeah. there we go. Mega sale. I love the mega sale. It's awesome. And we have some promo images uh, mocked up by Mr. Brad Campbell. Mr. Brad. So, always yes. looks awesome. Yes. Story-wide sell. I mean, store-wide sell. Store-wide. <laughs> Story <laughs> That's awesome. That's so, guys. Uh, Brad, Brad jab there. <laughs> he'll, he'll know. That's, that's cool. <laughs> Moving on, we're going to dive into the storylines that are hitting this week. And we have several of them to cover. I'm going to go ahead and dive into the first storyline from DC Comics, Green Lantern, number 36, Godhead storyline, Act 2, Part 1. They have this broken up into acts and parts for us. Yeah. But in this particular issue, we're taking a look at Hal Jordan as he leads the survivors <coughs> uh, <coughs> excuse me, to a haven that they w may not even survive going to because of the devastation that's happened to the Green Lantern Corps, and they are going to the anti-monitor, anti-matter universe. Yeah, not and, good. Yeah, not good at all. And also, it looks like they may even have to t team up with one of their deadliest enemies ever, the Black Hand. Yeah, really so, not good. So we've been seeing a lot of things going on here. Uh, we had the Sinestro issue last week that was a tie-in. We've been introducing some new, some new characters of the new gods, uh, some that we've seen, some that we haven't. Uh, a lot of exciting stuff going on with this particular Godhead storyline. Check it out. And Buzz and I conferred. We thought because we saw uh, Orion's helmet on Sinestro that that's who the new god was in it. 
Maybe yeah, it was not. Both, <laughs> so we don't know. It was a tease. <laughs> Just <Yeah>. a tease. <laughs> Buzz, what's up for you, bro? Uh, let's go with Avengers and X-Men Axis number four. Yep. Uh, this is after last issue, the Avengers and the X-Men split. It's no longer together. Havoc got his ball and left. And in this issue, <laughs> a founding here. Avenger quits. Who will it be? We'll find out. Also in this issue, we're going to find out what happens when the Hulk gets mad and turns into Cluck. And he is the strongest one there is. Yes. Also, Doom tears down Latveria, and an X-Men, the X-Men, join their greatest foe. Who is it? Apocalypse is on the cover, but... We don't know. We should also say there's the fate of the Red Skull that we're yeah. going to find out what's going on. Last issue, we, we saw the Red Skull go down, the Red Onslaught. But, uh, yeah, this issue we'll see if Professor X is back in there, or if it's still... I, I, the name, the name is just kind of kooky to me, Claw. Huh. But I gotta be honest with you, the Jimmy Chung version of him on the cover and stuff that I've seen looks freaking awesome. I mean, it's just Hulk spelled back, spelled backwards. Yeah, so. but I mean, the black, yeah. it's the black Hulk. Yeah, he looks like a like a black Colossus because when I saw him, he had like these yeah. lines. Yeah, well, it, it like, looked like when they were doing the uh, uh, fear itself. And they possessed the hammer, and it had the glowing kind of. Yes, it looked kind of like Maybe that. Maybe he ate a bomb. <laughs> no, he, no, he, 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 he let A-Bomb become a brick again. What else do we have with Axis? We also got the all-new X-Factor number 16. This is an Axis tie-in issue. Uh, <clears throat> we get to take a look at the president looking to serval industries for protection. But when it, whenever you're greeted by a team of uh, Sentinels, really, what does that uh, say about what's going on? Also, Gambit takes his shirt off. Apparently that was important enough that we needed to put we, that into the... the I had to know. know. <laughs> <laughs> He's on board. So there Peter we go. David and a naked gambit. <laughs> Avengers uh, Axis uh, number four and then all new X-Factor 16 are the Axis tie-ins this week. Yeah, uh, also kind of flowing with the whole X-Men talk here, well, let's talk yeah. about the death of Wolverine. We have two new number ones coming out this week. There's Life of After Logan number one. This is looking at how Logan affected multiple various individuals across the Marvel verse here yeah. and they're they're saying that they're going to there's only one way to celebrate Logan. Now if I know Logan, there's three things about him. There's there's drinking, there's sex, and there's fighting. Which one of those ways is it going to be that they celebrate? We'll have to read it and see. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Which one of those is the best at what he does? I, I don't know. I mean, she, I know what she hulks best at what she does. Uh, <laughs> but Logan claims it all the time. Well, that's well, true. Not, we'll see. That's true. We also have Weapon X program number one, and this is where, I, I don't know, we've seen different Weapon X uh, projects pop up here yeah. and there, so I don't know if these are some of those we've seen before or if these are all new. They are separate, or, or they are escaping from the program. Yeah. The program wants them back. However, it seems like the program is willing to kill, I guess, if they can't get them back. So what's going to be the thing that kills them first? Is it going to be their past? Is it going to be their new powers that they have? Or is it going to be some sort of strange connection that they have to Wolverine? In that last issue of uh, Death Wolverine number 4, there was a new Weapon X project that they were working on. Yeah, that, well, yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking those, like they those, had the Weapon X pro project that was uh, doing the, the Death Locks for a while. They've had multiple uh, right. projects there, so I'm not sure. Kane and they, from X they had the one that had like X five X different uh, Wolverine types that, that fought him, I think, back in uh, Origins uh, years back. I don't know. Yeah, there's been a lot of stuff ruined with that, apparently. So there we go. We can take a look at even more Weapon X program uh, uh, products. How about that, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Spider-Verse. Here we go. Who's covering that? I'll get it. I've been reading it, been enjoying it. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number nine. Yes. Our Peter Parker finally joins the storyline, and also uh, it's the return of Spider Gwen. Spider Gwen. Spider Gwen. Everybody's Woo! favorite. Yep. Also, Spider Verse team up number one. We're gonna find Old Man Spidey from Amazing Spider-Man number five hundred teaming up with Peter Porker, the spectacular Spider Ham. And also in that issue, we're gonna see Spider-Man Noir team up with the six-armed Spider-Man. So. 
And we, Sounds like a jam-packed issue. There. We should mention with uh, the that we are also going to be looking at Ben Riley, everybody's yep. favorite clone. Oh yeah, and uh, they're trying to recruit him to the Spider Army. Yeah, and we have uh, Coipel coming on as guest artist. I don't know if he's doing the story arc throughout this and Amazing Spider-Man. So right. that's awesome. Yes, I, I didn't realize. I, I wondered where he'd been, but I didn't realize he was doing that uh, that issue. That, yeah. uh, that issue of that. So that's going to be awesome. I think that's it for the storylines that we've got, guys. Awesome. Onward and onward. We are moving on to the question of the week. This was a huge Marvel news week. Primarily the Marvel Studios and the movies that they announced. And the question of the week is this. What newly announced Marvel movie are you most looking forward to? And here's the slate of movies in chronological order that's coming out between now and 2019. We got Captain America Civil War, uh, May 2016. We got Doctor Strange, November 2016. Guardians of the Galaxy 2, May uh, 2017. We got Thor Ragnarok, July 2017. Black Panther, November 2017. Avengers Infinity War, which is going to be two parts. The first part in May 2018. The second part in May 2019. Then we have Captain Marvel, July 2018. And The Inhumans. November 2018. So quite the, the the list of movies there that is coming out Power that's already House planned. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be freaking awesome. So we want to know what is the one of what is the one you're most looking forward to of these newly announced Marvel movies that will be hitting the theaters between now and 2019. Randy, start us off. I'm I'm going to go with. Uh, it's almost a toss up. I'm, I'm excited about Black Panther and I'm excited about Captain Marvel. I'm probably going to be edged out by Captain Marvel just because I've loved that character for so long here. I kind of consider Captain America 3, uh, uh, the Avengers 3, and uh, Guardians 2 and Thor 3 to all kind of already have been announced. We knew those were coming. So the Doctor Strange, the Inhumans, uh, the Black Panther, those guys are the ones that I'm, I'm really seeing as new. And, and uh, you know, it just, I'm really psyched about Captain Marvel. The yep. only thing that will be a bit of a downer is I think Katie Sackhoff has pretty much said she's not a part of it. Okay. If somehow in Age of Ultron 2 Sackhouse showed up, excuse my language, I would lose my shit. <laughs> that would be <laughs> awesome. Buzz, what are you looking forward to? I'm not the only one. I am <laughs> looking forward to Doctor Strange the most. Uh, I, I am excited for Black Panther too, but... Uh, Doctor Strange. At first, when I heard Joaquin Phoenix was going to be Doctor Strange, I was like, that, "That'll be interesting, you know." But now it's been changed to what's his name, Benedict uh, Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch, yeah. Sherlock Holmes, Khan. He's played a plethora of uh, famous, you know, figures already throughout, you know, fiction, and now he's going to be Doctor Strange, and I'm on board. Yeah, I think the one I'm most looking forward to is. Captain America 3, uh, Civil War. I mean, I mean, come on. I mean, uh, especially with the same uh, d uh, team that's going to be doing it, the Winter Soldier. Team, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so uh, that is... Uh, and bringing Civil War to the screen. I mean, that's like a far-fetched... Yeah. Just a dream to happen. I, I, that one disappoints me just slightly because they just left off with the Winter Soldier there and so much to explore with him that I was really hoping... They were going to get to that, and I hope there's not the curse of the the third film that goes on with this, where there's almost too much going right, on. Right. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, I guess part of my disappointment is that you didn't get a Winter Soldier movie announced. If they're if they're going in this direction, that you didn't get something more there. Right. Or that this wasn't called Captain America and Falcon. That I thought would be a good nod to it because you now have that team up of the characters, and that was the name of the book back in the day for uh, quite a while there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think a lot of other people are going to express some disappointment that Black Widow was not announced as, yeah. a, as a character. But or Hulk 3. Or the Hulk. Yeah, the Hulk coming out. But we have good ones here. Everybody should rejoice. And yes. uh, I'm sure once you guys have finally seen that uh, Avengers 2 trailer, you all agree with me that whoever questioned, you know, uh, James Spader, as Ultron, that should have been put to rest oh, just by what you saw in the trailer. And now you can say, stop getting on Marvel and Kevin Feige back there and say, look, you guys know what you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Just the, just the, did you, 
Just the moments of Spader uh, as Ultron in that trailer is just chilling. It's chilling. It's awesome. But did you guys see the uh, uh, Paul Rubens do the voiceover for the Avengers trailer? Uh, oh, no, I Ultron? haven't seen that. No. <laughs> no, I haven't. It was great. Look it up. <laughs> I, the, the only other thing is they, they mentioned like the, the script at the San Diego Con. And I was just happy it came out so perfectly with seeing like the smirking Thor drop the smile immediately when Cap yes. just like barely budgets. The he did budget. There. Yes. <laughs> yes. And yes. fanboy me went, oh! <laughs> <laughs> seeing the Hulk and Hulkbuster Iron Man photo yeah. interview, that was like, yeah! <sighs> so much, so much good stuff. There was, it was done. So, folks, tell us below what. Uh, what what a new Marvel movie that was just announced are you most looking forward to? Tell us in the comments below. You can also tell us what you thought of the Age of Ultron trailer. Now yeah. that we've got to see it uh, in its full glory, there may be a couple of different versions that hit you know between now and then, but that's the one we got for now. So tell us what you think about that. And we're going to move on to some brand new number ones that are hitting the shelf this week. There's several that are hitting, but we're only gonna, we're going to highlight a few of them here. I'm going to start off. No, you know what? I'll let you do it if you want to. No, you go ahead. Sure. Yeah. I was, I'll, I'll have mine at the end there. Okay. Very cool. <laughs> I was when I saw the name attached to this series, I was like, yes, I gotta check it out because it's Ghost Fleet number one from Dark Horse Comics and Donnie Cates, uh, the writer of this series, also was the one that wrote Buzzkill. This series I really liked from last year. I was like, yes, I've got to check this out. We got Donnie Cates writing, Dan Johnson on art from Dark Horse, and we're looking at. This, if you have valuable, dangerous, or very secret cargo that you need transported from one place to the other, you call the Ghost Fleet. This is an elite combat trained truckering agency that takes what you want and gets it where you need it to go. Need it to go. Uh, no strings attached. They get the job done. But we got an issue here where, who's our main character here? His they, name they, I, they didn't, I say didn't his name. see a name. Obviously, he's an amateur, though, because he did something. He, he takes early. a look at the cargo, and then that sets everything awry. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, this series, uh, especially what uh, Donnie, Donnie Cates has cooked up with this series. So it's a mini series, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, so it's not, not too much of a commitment, but uh, I'm really looking forward to this. And Randy has something to add to and, this as well. Let me just say, speaking of transporters, let's think about that. Transporters. transporters. Let's think about the transporter. Frank Martin. Frank Martin <laughs> has three rules, and one of those rules is you never open the package. Right, right. It's like and the Fight Club rule. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they open the package, and all hell ensues. So, I mean, why not follow that rule? They did not go to the same school or learn the same rules there, apparently. They're not. No, because this guy peeks at the payload, and then a conspiracy happens there. So, I'm really looking forward. I guess you could say, think of it as a transporter, but with 18 wheelers. Yeah, sounds so, awesome though. Have fun with that. Uh, coming from Dynamite Studios, we have John Carter, Warlords of Mars, number one, coming out. Why is this so special? Well, a few reasons here. One is that they finally have the name John Carter they can use, and by golly, they are going to use yes. that name. Uh, yeah. and the other thing that's neat about this is so often when you see the the. the uh, series start over with some of these old classic series, you see the same thing going on where they're having to face off against Ming, and mm. they're not. It is now a new villain that they've never seen before that uh, he's having to, uh, uh, I say he, uh, John Carter's having to save um, his beloved and his adopted uh, homeworld there from. So this is going to be something new, something different, and it has a name that is a classic name we're all familiar with. Yes, yes. Buzz? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Tooth and Claw number one by Kurt Busiek, uh, Marvel's Astro City, they wrote all that, Yeehaw. Yep. And uh, get ready for Randy's eye roll because this is uh, a uh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Game of Thrones meets whatever. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Conan, there it is. But anyway, uh, this uh, high. Fantasy epic for mature readers, this secret conclave of wizards brings a legendary champion back through time to save the world with disastrous consequences. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this because Kurt Busiek is a pretty solid, uh, he's a solid writer. He's he a is. solid commodity. And honestly, he got his chance really to do fantasy type stuff way back years ago with George Perez on Avengers. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever they, they launched an Avengers series, whatever volume it was, and right. then like the next, uh, not the first storyline, but the second or third involved Morgan Le Fay. That was the very first storyline. That line. was the first storyline. So I'm looking forward to him doing his own thing with fantasy. I don't care if it's Conan meets Game of Thrones meets Commandy. I want to see what he's doing. 
And also, don't forget, this is a double-sized first issue right. for two ninety nine. Right. So that that is a great way to get your foot in uh, on a, on the story uh, with with the first issue. So this is from Image Comics, his creator own. The last stuff that he did from Image Comics, I remember Shock Rockets that he did. Shock Rockets was really good. I enjoyed that. He and Stuart Eminem, Stuart Eminem uh, uh, great stuff back then. Uh, they were under the Gorilla Press imprint or something thank you. like I that. I can't remember the name of it. It was Press. Gorilla something. Yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to Tooth and Claw. I haven't seen this artist. Uh, but no, he's a rising star. Is what okay. they the cover art looks good. If that's who's, I think uh, that's who it uh, is. And yeah. so, yeah, and this shouldn't be confused with the uh, Tooth and Claw series from way back in the day. That no. Mar uh, Max Teixeira or whatever his name is, uh, Mark Teixeira. Uh, who, who's the? Was it? Uh, yeah, was it was Teixeira. It was Teixeira. Okay. That that. Yeah. Yeah. That, no, um, this is not or it. The, or the Black Cat Wolverine. <laughs> oh, now that you bring that up. That. I wonder how he's able to get that name because there was that series it back in the day. It probably lapsed at some point in time. There we I don't go. know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, last up, we yeah. have from uh, this is also from Image uh, Humans. Yes, from Image, and there are a couple of uh, creators I'm not familiar with, but I'm just going. I'm going to read the, <laughs> this write up for it because I love it. Apart, they are nothing. Deemed by society as outcast, misfits, losers, no good punks, but together, they are the humans. The Humans is a high-octane, no-holds-bar, ape biker gang chopper ride into the 70s exploitation genre bliss. Follow Bobby, Johnny, and all the humans as they fight and fly down the road to oblivion on a ride filled with chains, sex, leather, denim, hair, blood, bananas, and chrome. There we go. Weird mashup. <laughs> Planet of the Apes meets Easy Rider. Or Hell's Angels, <laughs> maybe, huh? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's something there. I'm going, I'm going with, there I'm going with the mashup. <laughs> I'm going with the mashup there. But it's it's some it's something that it looks different. It's I guess that maybe these guys debut just because I'm not familiar with the uh, the writers. Yeah, but uh, let's give it a, a go and see what it's like. I mean, come on, bananas and chrome. I mean, it's, how can you? It's grindhouse type. As right? long as it's yeah. not like the old Axel and uh, um, uh, Judge Reinhold, you know, putting the bananas in the the. the the muffler on the car, you know. Was that Beverly Hills Cop? Yeah, yeah there we go. <laughs> yeah. That's it for the new number ones, folks. Uh, there are more coming out. We're, we're just, just touching on these. Um, we're going to move on now to our favorites. These are the comics that are hitting the shelf that are usually at the top of the stack for us to read. The stuff that we look forward to the most from that week. But before we dive into that, there will be spoilers ahead because we are going to talk about our favorites from last week. And to start us off, Buzz, why don't you go ahead and start us off. What was your favorite from last week? This is all of our favorites. So just, <laughs> I'm going to throw that out there. It was Saga 24? Was that 24, 24. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Go buy it. Seriously. Gwendolyn and Sophie are about to bite the big one from these goblin-looking pig things. And who shows up to save them out of nowhere? Lion Cat. It was yeah. such an epic just seeing that you're just like, yeah, you know, because you had to turn the page to see what, what was about to happen, and there yeah. was Lion Cat just ready to pounce on one of those big things. But also in the book, we were introduced to the Wheels sister, the brand. I know we've heard of her before, but uh, we also got introduced to Sweet Boy, which is a dog that can shoot poison darts out of his nose, <laughs> and he puts Lion Cat down like that. And But anyway... Uh, at the end of the book, we're also hit with another gut punch where uh, Marco and Prince Robot the Force show up together and are like, we're going to get our kids back now. And sometimes, we also should mention the new coolest character besides Sweet Boy. We have Goose. Uh, Goose is just too awesome. He has his uh, his beater or whatever he called the, the yeah. uh, his axe there. And it looks like we've got a new crew that's going to be forming with these characters. That's way too cool. And I think that some time has uh, gone by in this because yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gwendolyn mentioned something like five years uh, that she's had uh, uh, the, I don't know, the, I wheel? Name. the the girl, oh, Sophie, oh, right. with Sophie. Her. Sophie, Sophie with her. So I don't know. And and that was really cool on having uh, the brand mention his his cloak because I did not catch Gwendolyn wearing that at first. Uh, I saw yeah, the, right. uh, the plate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, it was the uh, last issue of Rachel Rising. I cannot remember the number <laughs> that it was, maybe 30 uh, on Rachel Rising. I love this. Uh, the art's awesome, but they're getting into uh, finally uh, trying to figure out who killed Rachel. Okay. And 
they just have this spectacularly spooky scene where Rachel is at like a Home Depot type uh, place and she's looking at these different pieces of rope and she has the, the markings of where a rope choked her uh, at, at one point in time which was probably what you know led to her death and this elderly black man is helping her and she's saying I want to find what rope could do this uh, and he's like well why don't you report this to the police she said no this guy deserves uh, something worse than that and the old man wells up with tears in his eyes and he, he grabs a rope and he tells her and he's like my my grandfather was lynched uh, back in the day and I've seen rope burns like that before so that was really powerful with something like that and at the end it just has her she's put on the dress that she woke up in and she's lying on her, her floor and choking herself with that again she's trying to recreate this death to figure out how and what you know maybe spark some images so it was just real spooky and powerful with what they did there very cool very cool for me southern bastards number five Ooh. That was <laughs> that was the best issue from last week that I read. Besides, <laughs> Trump Saga twenty four for me. It was it was better. I did like Saga and many many of the tidbits and everything that happened with that. But with this issue of Southern Bastards that we got, like a Buzz, like like Buzz was surprised we were continuing the series period because yeah. with what happened with the end of issue four. But now with issue five. Uh, we this issue solely focused on Coach Boss, and you got to see uh, it was amazing because not only you got to see what he did, the horrible thing that he did in issue number four, where he killed T Earl Tubbs with with his own beaten with a stick that Earl Tubbs was carrying around. He killed him, but in this issue, you go from you go from seeing this maniacal psychopath kill somebody in the street, everybody looking on, and nobody does anything about it, to this particular issue where you get to look at Coach Boss's past and everything has not been rosy for him. Uh, things happen to him in his past where you actually develop a little bit of sympathy for this guy that, that is just a hard-nosed, just horrible person. And the way this the issue ended where he's in his uh, in his restaurant, he says, whatever's Nadine, whatever, give every piece of pie that they want, make him sit down and eat it, Coach's Rules. He walks into his restaurant, takes that stick that he killed that guy with and puts it at the top of one of his trophy cases. Because he was complaining in the book that people are just going to forget about this he and people not acknowledge it. Yeah. This will be a constant reminder. And also, he even showed up at Tubbs' funeral. He was there at the funeral. <laughs> at the funeral. <laughs> one of the with, only people there, yeah. Well, with Tubbs' uncle oh, that yeah, showed up, yeah. you know. So it was like, yes, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was, man, it was, it was really good. Plus, also, this also sets up the series too. For anybody that's, that's that is interested in, in seeing strong female characters uh, with the events of issue four going on now, we're now we're going to be looks like we're going to launch into this series actually focusing on a strong female character in upcoming issues. So, if that's something that you're very you're interested in, you like, you should be checking out Southern Bastards. Yeah, we've got uh, some number ones we're going to dive into now. I'll start things off here with Nailbiter number seven. Why am I excited about this one? Uh, how could it, it, Nailbiter possibly become a better book? Why, you're going to have Brian Michael Bendis, right. guest Bendis. star. He is not going to write the book. He is inside he's the just, book. He's a the character. He's a character. character. He's uh, coming to, uh, uh, what's the town? Kick up or uh, uh, catch a catch a caboo, whatever. <laughs> what, he, he's coming to town to research uh, serial killers for a new comic book that he's going to be writing, and uh, you're going to see him buckaroo. in for the fight, Buckaroo, in for the fight of his life, possibly squealing, squealing, <laughs> squealing. Oh, I can't wait to see this. Did I read that this is going to be a uh, tribute to Powers Number Seven? Like, yeah, the, I, I, the I think I think something like that yeah. is, is. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah Powers yeah. Powers was. Uh, Number seven was a tribute to uh, something else. He did something with that, didn't Number he? Number seven he did. Is Warren that, Ellis was in it, wasn't he? I'm, Greg Rucka was in it, too. Was he? Okay, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. What, what's up for you for this week? Uh, let's go with Hulk number eight. Yes! Red She-Hulk yes. versus Doc Green. Uh, Doc Green's got A-bomb and Scar's head up on his mantle from changing them back from their gamma irradiated self to just a normal human. But Scar may possibly still have the uh, the old strong power yeah, yeah. in him from his mother. But now it's Betty Ross versus Bruce Banner. Yes. Yes, sir. This is going to be yes. a, a 
This may just be an argument. I don't know. That could, <laughs> yeah. be, that could be more interesting <laughs> than the fight itself. We call the cops on some domestic violence there. It's going to well, be red <laughs> on green violence. Well, honestly, though, with each issue, though, there has been some action involving each. Yeah. Now, there's yeah. been a, there's been some fight going oh, on. Oh, there's been some big fightage. But the, with, with the way that last issue ended, where Betty Ross said, "I've dealt with enough." Yeah. Banner in my life. This is <laughs> this is not going to happen. So yeah, I'm looking forward. And this, to this. is a Hulk she's never encountered before. Too. Yeah, exactly. Doctor, so. yeah. Cool. Looking forward to that. Up for me, we got uh, Velvet Number Eight. Ed Brubaker, nice. Steve Epting are still killing it with this series. This is one of the most gorgeous series that hits the shelf every month, and I've been totally uh, enthralled with what they've been doing with the character, especially in the past couple of issues because she has simply made her way back to the headquarters yeah. and she's making her way back to the headquarters literally in this issue the same place and people that look like they've tried to set her up for the murder of one of their agents so I'm really looking forward to this yeah uh, that's a cool one uh, definitely at the top of my stack I've got names number three is my other one here and with this yes. we have uh, the surgeon is on the hunt he is looking for he is in the same house there as Philip uh, the the son yeah. and so who knows what's going to go on with that exactly. And then we have Katya. She's getting closer and closer to uh, figuring out what's going on with her husband's uh, mysterious death. You know, the so-called case closed death. Right. And this time she's getting, uh, she discovers there's this sect, this group called the Tulips. And uh, so yes. that possibly is going to have some more answers. And it says just when things kind of get more bizarre, it looks like uh, Kate, uh, Katya's husband is about to speak. Right. So I don't know exactly what's going to go on there. I'm, I'm going to have to read it to figure that out. Uh, we'll, we'll see. But uh, it's probably the group there that's been manipulating everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Names that's been manipulating everything there that's going to do something with this. So. Yeah. Yeah. See. And the husband's been trying to talk to him the entire time. Yeah. All leaving stuff, leaving so. hints. Uh, that's just crazy. I know what I'm in here, so I'm going to have to leave hints in case I ever have yeah. a mysterious death. Very cool. What's up for you? I was going to talk about Birthright number two. We all read that book, but I'm going to throw a curveball here. It's going to be Batman Eternal number 31. Cool. Uh, Alfred teams up with Bane. Bane's coming back. He's oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I have this this hope that some writer is going to come along and write Bane like he was originally introduced into the DC Universe as a smart, strong, you know, methodical, you know, presence, not this big you know, ogre type, yeah. you know, that gets whooped in one issue by Batman, you know, I mean, this is the guy that broke Batman, you know, right. the, I mean, he has like legendary status and he's kind of been treated as a, a B-lister since then, in my right. opinion, but I'm just hoping that somebody comes along and brings him back and, uh, like even Gail Simone wrote him as kind of like a comedy act in Secret Six. I enjoyed I Secret Six, but disturbing he, his uh, his motherly or fatherly act toward a scandal was, it, it was, it was yeah. interesting, but it wasn't, wasn't right. Chuck Dixon's thing. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. no. Uh, well, since he did, uh, Birthright number two, I'm going to take that one. I'm looking forward to Birthright number two. We got to see, uh, when that first issue there's just such an emotional roller coaster that happened and with the story, the family, the return of the son at the very end, and in this issue we get to see even more that things are not what they appear to be, as we were hinted at, it was hinted at us at the last page there yeah, of that, uh, that issue last number one. Page. That was one of those where it was good, I was reading it, I was enjoying it, and I was like, okay, this will be kind of cool to see, and you turn to the last page and you're like, Whoa! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that is way too awesome. Exactly. Exactly. And the writer, and, and I mean, uh, so far he's keeping with what he's talked about. Your, your greatest dream is to have your son return, but then maybe that's the worst thing that could happen yeah. too. So that's what we're looking at, and even more of that with issue number two hitting the shelf this week. And we got a whole new batch of number ones, didn't we? Ah, uh, those are gone. They're gone. Oh, I. Yeah. I. He was I promoted. <laughs> promoted. There that go. book. I was gonna say, <laughs> so go get number one, but it's gone again. We had maybe a dozen one. of them, and I was just like, left and right. Read this. You have to. You better. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, and folks, remember our advice. Pre number one, pre-ordering is your friend. And when you see this video, any of the new number ones that we mentioned, uh, and we'll, there will be some more listed down below. If you're interested in getting those, you can contact us to get it added to your list so we can hopefully get you a copy uh, in your pull box. And, and that way you have a, a first printing, brand new number one of whatever it is that you're interested in because yeah. they sell out. They, they sell out. I'm expecting Tooth and Claw by Kurt Busiek to sell out. 
Uh, so, and, and uh, I'm not sure about the others, but I am uh, expecting that one to sell out. So, that is it. That's it for our favorites. That's it for this week's episode. Remember, mark your calendar for the Mega Sale. Uh, November 20th to 23rd, there's going to be tons of stuff. There are literally things that, that go on sale here for 75% off. Like Randy said, the back issues, if you can hold out and take a gamble like that, then you'll be able to get some back issues for really cheap. Mega deals from the Mega Sale. Exactly. So, thanks for watching, guys. We are Excalibur Comics Cards and Games here in Shreveport, Louisiana, as well as our store in Texarkana, Texas. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up down below. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. And you can always find out what's going on with our stores at ExcaliburCCG.com. Anything else to add, gentlemen? That's about it. That's it. Until next time, folks, be safe, read great comics, and we will see you in our next video. Bye-bye.